my name is David Spurgle. Today we're going to be talking about uh, workflows between uh, Rhino, Revit, AutoCAD, and whatever other uh, 3D, there are several other 3D applications too that we can talk about, but uh, those are going to be the main ones. Um, first we're going to go over a little Rhino Grasshopper Primer. Uh, what is Rhino? Where does it fit into a workflow? How does Grasshopper fit? Uh, then we're going to talk about what I think is very exciting new development, which is called Rhino Inside, and we'll we'll talk about what it's inside uh, when we get there. But it's inside a few things, um, and then we're going to talk about exporting models. So you have a model now, you want to get it somewhere else. How do you do that while preserving um, the three D structures and integrity of the model? All right. So as the field of architecture gets more and more digitized, um, very very often we have clients that um, use multiple applications in their workflow. Um, very rarely have I encountered uh, a situation where you know, they'll say, oh, we only use Rhino, we only use um, you know, SketchUp or whatever. So it's becoming much more of a um, priority for these firms to think about how you're modeling it, how you get it from Rhino to Revit, how you get it from Revit to Rhino, AutoCAD, vice versa, um, while preserving the geometry, while preserving um, all of the editable features of the model. And what it really comes down to is choosing the right tool for the job. Um, some of Rhino's strengths uh, is that it can be very flexible. So uh, Revit is very constrained by, by certain parameters. Rhino doesn't necessarily have those constraints. So you're able to create uh, unique forms, fabricate organic shapes, um, you know, you're, not, you're sort of not limited, but because of that limitation, uh, it makes bringing it from Rhino into Revit uh, a bit of a challenge sometimes. So it's also very adaptable. It's, it's uh, import, export, almost any 2D, 3D format. Um, it's expandable, and as we'll talk about later, where we go into uh, some of the, the new upcoming features. Um, it's got a V-Ray capability, which is one of the most powerful rendering engines. Um, it also has its own built-in rendering engine as well. Um, and then if you're interested, it's got uh, several different plugins for BIM integration. Um, but we're also going to look at Rhino Inside, which we think will be uh, very valuable for uh, this feature going forward. Um, it's also really fast. So the, the um, comparison I like to make is a sketchbook versus draft paper. Um, things of that nature. So, uh, you know, you have a little sketchbook, you can sketch real fast. Uh, and then when you're ready, you can bring your sketch into, you know, a real draft paper. Uh, Rhino, in this case, would be kind of like the sketchbook. And then when you're done, you kind of have to plan everything out and put it into Revit. That would be drafting paper in this analogy. Um, Grasshopper. What is it? Uh, basically, if you're familiar with uh, Revit and some of the tools, Available to you there, um, specifically Dynamo. It, I would I would make that uh, that's probably the closest approximation to to what Grasshopper does. It's a visually scripting um, language, and it's a way to automate the three D modeling and organization process within Rhino. So instead of clicking buttons and menus to uh, to run operations on the three D model, uh, you'll use Grasshopper to link these commands together. So imagine the process of modeling a fence. You know, first you might start with, um, you know, the, the trace the line on the ground that it's going to cover, and then you might create, uh, you know, how high it is, uh, how many posts it has, so on and so forth. And with Grass, Grasshopper, you can uh, automate this process and define different parameters that you can modify in real time um, to create your model uh, algorithmically. Um, so I'm going to play a little video for you that I, I recorded and as I talk over it. Um, just wanted to try to avoid the uh, pitfalls of live software demo, but uh, we'll see. We'll see later. So here you can see I'm drawing a little curve on this uh, on the plane. Uh, on the left you see the different grasshopper parameters um, that I am working with. So here I am setting this curve as the input curve. So it's going to use this to base all of the um, Future future functions on. So right there, there's the uh, live preview of my Grasshopper script. Um, this is the fence that I was the fence that I was talking about before. Uh, so you can see the uh, the rails there are a little comically large. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Scrolling over, 
And you can see all of these sliders are adjustable, right? So, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be sliders. You can have it be a, um, you know, just a straight number input, um, drop downs. But basically what this does is this inputs value and then uh, does some process to it. And then you end up with this shape at the end. So you can see I'm, I'm changing the different radius to the radius of the posts. And there you have a fence on that uh, you know, profile that I drew. So this is a really good way of, um, you know, if there's something that you do a lot of, or if, um, you know, it really doesn't make sense for you to model this uh, every time you want a fence, right? So this would be the, uh, the solution there. And you can extrapolate this procedure to walls, doors, um, curtain walls, panels, whatever, anything you can think of. It's really kind of endless. Okay. And here's another quick one. Um, this one just shows a, some of the different procedures you can do with Grasshopper, uh, creating a really, you know, more, more fixed surface, uh, then making these little pipe elements. Um, that was just a quick one showing the kind of freeform capability uh, of Grasshopper. So that's a little bit of primer. Um, now we're going to get into the fun stuff, which is Rhino inside. And before I had a slide that was, you know, it had this and some other text around it, where it was really, you know, sometimes when you're going from Rhino to Revit, Revit to Rhino, it feels like you're trying to shove a, a, a square peg into a round hole. Um, but what if you could just make the square peg round and then uh, it would just fit perfectly? Well, that's kind of the situation that we're in now. So let me introduce a Rhino inside. So let me pull this up. So a few things about Rhino inside. Um, it is a, an open source work in progress project. Um, and basically it lets Rhino and Grasshopper run inside other applications. So the thing that I want to emphasize there is that they share the same memory space. So the same features that you are using or building in Rhino or Revit, uh, it'll be able to read that um, without converting file formats, without um, you know, exporting, importing. Uh, it'll, it's just all native. So it's possible to, uh, you can drive the host application with Grasshopper definitions. Um, we, we can uh, use the Rhino APIs uh, in the host's plugins, and we can also create native objects in the host application with Rhino and Grasshopper. So in order to use Rhino inside Revit, um, you will need to use the, uh, download and install the uh, uh, Rhino WIP version, which is the preview version seven of Rhino, and you need a valid Rhino 6 license in order to do that. So you would just go over here to this page, download install over here and, and grab that from there. Uh, once you do that, you just go over to here to the GitHub, page. Uh, this kind of gives you a good overview of all of the things that um, this tool is able to do. Grab the installer over here. Um, it used to be, a, uh, it's really nice to have an installer now. It used to be we had to compile the build from the source code. So they made that a little bit easier for, for everyone to uh, uh, do themselves. Um, and then we, you take a look, there's a bunch of different sample projects over here. Um, and I'll show you a few that uh, we've been working on over here. And uh, Scott, you could feel free to jump in if there's anything I'm missing or uh, anything like that, or I'll just uh, keep going. Right it looks great. <laughs> awesome, great. <laughs> glad, I, glad I got everything. Um, so this is, you might remember our uh, uh, Revit sample project. Um, we'll get back to this one in a little bit. Let me just open up a new file. Oh, oh no, okay. Whew. So I wasn't, wasn't planning on uh, doing the live demo, but uh, stuff is so cool that I, I had no choice. All 
All right, bear with me. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna be showing is how to get your Rhino model into Revit. So first let's do a 3D view so that we can be able to see this a little easier. Um, in your add-ins, once you install the plugin, it's gonna show up right here. So here's my, my Rhino, uh, Rhino model that I want in Revit. It. Okay, never mind. So here she is. And then I just I loaded up my Grasshopper script, which um, if you'll notice, if you're familiar with Grasshopper, you might notice a new tab up there at the top, Revit. Um, so here are all the different Grasshopper components that you can use to hook into um, Revit from Grasshopper. So you can pull out the geometry filter uh, by elements, and this is reading it all from the same memory space as um, our Revit file that is open in the back there. So it's you know, like I said, no importing exporting. Uh, we're we're talking about like the same. You know, it's, they're reading the same language. Uh, so what we're going to do here is here's our input for B reps, right? So we're going to map this at multiple B reps. Now we're going to go over here to our Rhino model, and we're just going to select all of the geometry that uh, we want to put into our Revit model. And you can see, hold on, almost, get these posts. Great. And look at that. Now these are native. Uh, Revit, Revit geometries. Um, you can choose what, uh, how they're mapped. So we just imported them as what do we do furniture. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> so those are furniture. Um, but really, you can do you know every, any category that you have in in Revit. It'll read, and you can assign it to um, to that category or family or whatever you know. However, you want to want to structure that necessarily. Um, you can do it by layer. So I. I know that one of the uh, best practices is to you know, kind of sort in Rhino by uh, like walls, ceilings, floors, etc. by layer. Um, you can uh, import in that way or however your, your file structure is. Um, doesn't really does really matter. So you can see here these are all uh, and if we go back to Rhino just want to show you that any changes that you make in this model will be reflected in the Revit model. So let's move this over here. Oh, you know what? I closed uh, closed Grasshopper. That's what happened. Sorry about that. OK, so let's move this over here. And now my geometry moves to match the the rhino model and one more thing that i want to show you is if we let's close out of these let's unpin this guy and we'll start from a fresh fresh page Okay, that's fine. If we hit this sample eight button, uh, we can load it directly. And now we have that whole file uh, imported into our Revit model. And so those are just two different ways to, uh, to accomplish a very similar a similar task. Um, there's several different um, sample scripts and files that come with uh, Rhino inside. There's more being added uh, all the time. We check back to uh, the GitHub. You know, you can see that it's not just uh, Revit 
integrate into AutoCAD as well. Uh, Python, BricsCAD, JavaScript, Excel, Unity, uh, Illustrator, anything you can uh, think of, that's, that's the uh, progress so far. And now you, let's talk a little bit about, uh, once you're, you got your models in Revit, um, how do you get them out? Um, and why would you want to get them out? Well, the one that, uh, the case that I'm talking about specifically is for uh, model making or 3D printing. Uh, very often, you know, we'll be dealing with uh, a, a model that someone comes to us with from Revit, says, well, we want to print, print this model, and thinks it's going to be just a simple export, throw it in the printer, and it's done. Uh, as many of you that may have tried this will attest, this is not necessarily the case. Um, you know, what wall thicknesses that you think are uh, sufficient in, when you're looking at it on the screen, uh, shrunk down to 3D print size, end up being um, paper thin. So let's talk about how we deal with, deal with that. Uh, let me, let's clear that out there. Let's get a new file. Right. Okay. I, okay. So everyone knows uh, our favorite Revit sample file. Seen it a lot. So should be very familiar with it. Um, that's why I picked it. So let's go open up our, our Rhino and Grasshopper. Let's open up another script that we made. Revit to Rhino. All right, so let's arrange this. All right, everyone can see both windows. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, great. Um, so now you can see on this, uh, on our grasshopper definitions, um, it's pulling all these categories from our Revit model. And you can drop this down and select whichever ones you want. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with, uh, actually I do want walls. Walls is probably gonna be the first, first thing that we want, right? So let's grab walls from here. A little further, there we go. And now if I just hit this, look at that. Just took all the walls that we modeled in Revit, extracted them and brings them right into our, our Rhino model. And now we do the same with roofs. Me, uh, it's a little bit more impressive if I turn the shading on. I think we're missing doors. Floors might be nice as well. Let's, let's do that next. Whoop. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Got some more floors, windows. And so the beauty of this is that. Um, you know, one of the drawbacks of, of exporting from Revit is you, know, you get a lot of geometry that you don't really want. Um, you know, you're getting you're getting uh, light fixtures, you're getting um, you know railings, and in this situation, what we're doing is um, really just picking and choosing the features and geometries that we want that we're going to print and leaving everything else out. So let's finish up with, did I do the curtain panels? I think I did the curtain panels. No, nope, no I didn't, here we go. Okay, great, so now we have, you know, kind of like the, the rough exterior of the model, which if you're in you know, 3D printing, that's really, all that you need. You don't need the you know, dining room table um, necessarily, or uh, you know any of this stuff on the inside. Um, so why bother? 
let's see if there's anything else that we want to want to grab. Um, I think that's good for now. So now from here, you have your model. Let's close out of this. And now we need to get this to the 3D printer. Um, so all that we need to do from here is file, save as, and we're going to save it as an STL for printing. We'll call it uh, And now let's open that back up and we'll and take a look at it. Yes, yeah, so this is the that's the process of getting your model out from Revit into Rhino. Um, and from here, you can uh, do whatever you want with it. Set it up for a V-Ray render, 3D print it. Um, and again, uh, this is a work in progress feature. Uh, that means that new new uh, abilities and features are being added to it all the time. Um, again, you need a valid Rhino 6 license in order to uh, install Rhino inside. Um, and you also need to download the um, Rhino 7 uh, Serengeti build of Rhino, uh, which does have some other nice features such as uh, sub-D modeling.